Hello from Linda Ann. Today I'm going to show you how I did my Dragonfly Legend composition using Deco Art products. The Creative Arts Collaboration uh, November hashtag event is titled Thankful for Art. My earliest memory of being thankful was being thankful for my mother. You might think it odd that I'm going to use a dragonfly to represent that thankfulness, but I think you'll understand by the end of the video. I'll be using several Deco Art products today. And the first one is White Gesso from Deco Art. I did this canvas early so it would dry, but I went across one way and then to when it dried, went across the other way for good coverage. This is a square canvas, about uh, 12 inches square. I'm beginning my background with Deco Art's Fluid Acrylics. This color that I am putting on now is Titan Buff. Now I'm adding Cobalt Teal. I don't want these to dry out while I'm putting down the other colors, so I'm going to add a little spray or a little mist to them. So while I put down the other colors, they'll be very moist. This one is Cerulean Blue. and primary cyan. While I'm spraying these colors with uh, water and tilting them all over my canvas and moving them with the brush and playing with them to make a background, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the dragonfly and why I chose the dragonfly to represent my mother's um, thankfulness for my mother. There was about a four year period in my life where I lost all of my primary family, all three people that I grew up with, my brother, my father, and my mom. As I said, it was about four years, but it seemed like four weeks to me because it was just, I wasn't getting over one person and helping take care of something else until another person was gone. So the day I lost my mother, I said it felt like I lost three people. She was my mother, but she was also my best friend, and she was my college classmate all the way through college. I was doing some Native American inspired art after that period of time and still grieving very heavily for my mom. Let me stop and make it clear here that I'm a Native American inspired artist, not a Native American artist. To be a Native American artist, you need a CDIB, which is a certificate of degree of Indian blood. So I had a craft show and I was sitting by a, a Native American storyteller and she started telling me some of the different stories about turtles and she came up to dragonflies because she noticed that I had paintings of dragonflies. I'm sure I won't do it justice, but I'd like to tell you the legend of the dragonfly in my own words. In a little muddy pond under the lily pads, there were some eggs that hatched out and they became little water nymphs. They were very happy and comfortable living under the lily pads, but a sadness came over them because they noticed that one by one, the little nymphs were crawling to the top of the lily pads, and then they never came back. They disappeared forever as if they were dead. The little water nymphs decided that they would find out what was causing this, and so they made an agreement that the next one that disappeared would come back to the, the community underwater and explain why they were leaving and why they didn't return. And he would relate what he saw at the top of the lily pad. And sure enough, it wasn't long before one little nymph felt the urge to climb to the top of the lily pad. But when he reached the top, he was very tired, and so he lay down in the sun and took a nap. When he woke up, he discovered that his body had changed. He had wings. He had turned into a beautiful dragonfly. He spread his wings and began to fly and discovered a world that he so beautiful that he never knew existed. He became very excited that this was such a superior life to what he was used to under the lily pads. And then he remembered he had made an agreement with the little nymphs under the water. He had to go back and tell them what a beautiful world there was above. He was anxious to tell his friends that he felt more alive than he ever had before. He was not dead. He had a better life now than ever. So he flew down and sat on the water and watched the ripples 
go from his body all the way out to the land. Wouldn't his friends be excited when he told them all the wondrous things that happened here? So he turned his head toward the water and tried to go back under the lily pad. But he found that his wings kept him afloat. He was unable to go back down into the water. He peered down under the lily pads and he could see his little friends waiting on him there and they seemed very sad that he was gone. But there was no way for him to go back and tell them or explain that it was a good life for him, that it, there were wonderful things to look forward to. And as he peered under the lily pads at his sad little friends, he realized that someday they would understand this too, and that they would be here with him. One day they would all be together again, and they would all know the good news of what was above the lily pad. So the little nymph, who had transformed into a dragonfly now, raised his wings, spread them out, and flew out into his glorious new life and new world. So now each time I do a painting of a dragonfly, I think of someone who has gone on to the next beautiful world and has wings. I'm thankful that I had a wonderful mother. I don't celebrate her birthdays anymore. I celebrate her heavenly birthdays. This beautiful red violet color that I added is called quinacridone violet. I continue to add more of each of the colors that I've already used and manipulate them with brushes and by tilting the canvas until I had just exactly what I wanted in the background. It's a lot of fun to mist these with water and watch them flow. To, um, they flow together and make new colors and then I used my brush of course to any little puddles that seemed like there was uh, concentrated paint on it. I broke it up with a paintbrush and I ended up getting this canvas and I'm really happy with this kind of background. Here's some detail work and it's time to set it aside and let it dry once again. I made sure everything was thoroughly dry and I pulled out my Andy Skinner stencil called Sunburst and also this palette knife from Deco Art. I'll be honest with you when I first saw this I thought it looked like a toy but it works very efficiently. I'll use Deco Art's matte medium to do just the outer edges of this stencil. I've already pulled it too close to the center, but that's okay. When I lift the stencil, I can scrape anything extra that I don't want off with the palette knife. Using the stencil and the matte medium will give it a very thin um, texture around the dark area on my canvas and that's exactly what I want. I want it to look like little ripples in the water. I'm aware from having done these in the past that you may not be able to see it on camera but you can see it here while it's wet. So I can use the time while the matte medium dries to uh, design the dragonfly that I want to put on here. These wings look pretty good but I'm thinking maybe I want something a little more stylized so I'm going to use these wings just to see if they're about the right size and I'll put them down on this uh, canvas. Now the medium here is still wet on the inside but it's surface dried so I can lay these down without them sticking or without harming anything and that looks like maybe it's just a tiny bit too big and so I have an idea for my size and I can keep designing until I get the wings the way I want them. The canvas is dry now, so I'm going to use one of Andy Skinner's other stencils called Tornado. We know all about tornadoes in Oklahoma, but this is going to look like water swirls instead of tornadoes when I get finished. There's an area right over here that I really don't like, so I'm going to make sure that I cover that or disguise it with this stencil. And I'm not going to use all of the stencil uh, sometimes I'm going to let it hang off the edge of the page, other times I'm just going to use the center area and then sometimes the outside area depending on where, the, where I put it on the canvas. I'm using a makeup sponge and a little bit of this um, cobalt teal in the fluid acrylics. 
I'm dabbing my sponge in, making sure that it's well covered, and then I'm just going to use a dabbing motion on the stencil uh, so that it won't leak too much underneath. Uh, it is a fluid acrylic, so I have to be really careful with this. Continuing to dab up and down on the stencil, and I'm going to raise the edge and see how it looks, and I like that, so I'm removing the stencil and moving to another area. I decided that uh, that dark area on my canvas that I had kind of a violet air area might look nice with this stencil on top of it. That same area that I used the, the starburst stencil on before. So this one is going on top of the starburst. I continue to move it around and usually I'm avoiding that little dot in the center. I'm not sure that I want the dot. And now I'm moving to the final area where I want to place the stencil, kind of in the corner area, and then I'll go wash the stencil. I usually wash my stencils with Dawn dishwashing liquid in the kitchen sink, but it's not working on this one today, so I remembered that I have some brush cleaner, uh, brush and stencil cleaner from Deco Art, and I'm going to try that on a paper towel and see if it's going to take anything off. I hope it doesn't remove my nail polish. And as I rub across this, I see that it is beginning to lift the paint off of the stencil. So I'm going to take it to my kitchen sink and work on it where it's easier to work on. And I have a little vegetable brush over there that I think that will take everything right off. That worked really well. This looks like a brand new stencil, like I've never used it. Uh, here's the little brush. I just brushed it real softly with this brush, and it's, it's clean. I finally cut a wing shape that I like and I'm going to put this right in the center of the dark area where I have the two stencils overlapping and I'm going to take the green 3D frost gloss enamels. Uh, these have a pointed applicator on the tip and it'll make it easy to outline. Now I'm going to try not to get on the wing but just outside the wing because I'm afraid that if I get on the wing when I lift this it will smear. I'm finding it a bit challenging to do the outline because normally I would pull this very close to my body but if I want to show it to you on camera I need to put it over on the table where the camera can view it. So I'm getting a few little ripples and I think I can clean some of that up. It doesn't look too bad, but I'll clean any areas up that I think look uh, a little too puffy. And I'll put these wings on the other side and trace them. And I'm not necessarily going to make the wings the same design that I have. I'm not going to make the inside of the wings the same design that I have drawn on these. I'm going to wait and see what I think looks best. Do you ever find that after you do something the hard way, you figure out the easy way to do it? So I traced the wings with the pencil, and it should be easier to go over this line instead of trying to outline that uh, little tag board shape.
this is my first time to use this and I'm still getting a few ripples in it but I think I can uh, work on that and fix it when I'm all finished. In fact, I'm going to use the tip right here to fix it. When I got to the body part, I was able to remember to outline first instead of doing it the hard way. So this went a lot easier. And now I've got my basic shape on and I'll start some decorating to the inside of the wings. Here I'm making some little dots as decorations and I don't like that they have little peaks on them. So the answer to that is to reach your hand under the canvas and tap. Just keep tapping, uh, hold, hold it in one hand and tap with the other hand. And these dots, the little peaks on the dots, will settle right down. I'm going back for, with some of the colors that I used before. The uh, quinacridone violet was one of my favorites and I'm going to use these in the body of the dragonfly but I'm going to mix them up as I go so that uh, he'll look a little bit somewhat iridescent perhaps. I decided to add some of the ultramarine blue from the traditions and uh, that's really really darkening it and making it look good. And I keep mixing colors that I've already used together until I'm satisfied with the body and then I decide to move on to the wings. And I'll add water to these paints before I use them on the wings because I want you to be able to look through. To, they need to look transparent. A dragonfly's wings are usually transparent. But I mix the colors just like I did in the body and I really like the look that I came up with. I keep going back to the same colors that I've used before and mixing them together and going over the outside edges of these wings. The inside edges will be painted also, but these outside uh, lines, I want them to be just a little darker so that uh, it looks like one piece. I don't want it to look like I've got a big body there and then the wings almost disappear. And it's time for another drying time. I sealed this with a matte sealer and then I used triple thick, the kind that you brush on, and it made it the dragonfly very shiny and pretty. Uh, triple thick comes in both spray and brush on. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'd also appreciate it if you share or comment. If you'd like to find other artists in this collaboration, type Thankful for Art in your YouTube search bar. Thank you for watching. Come back soon.